The panel is joining us from their remote locations. Washington Post columnist Eugene Robinson, NBC News White House correspondent Kristen Welker, and senior editor of The Dispatch and a Time Magazine columnist David French. David, I want to start with you. You wrote a very um, uh, passionate uh, column to, uh, over the weekend about sort of your own personal experiences and trying to explain to white America what institutional racism is. Uh, expound upon it. Yeah, you know, I think when a lot of white Americans, especially conservative white Americans, hear a word like systemic racism, they feel like it's a personal affront to them, that the system that I'm a part of is racist and I'm in this system and I'm racist? No, I'm not. But what I tried to do was break down and explain, and, and I got a very unique, a very unique uh, perspective on this when we adopted our youngest daughter from Ethiopia. and. A lot of our family's experiences change quite substantially. And, and what I tried to explain is just let, let, let's just look at this and say, if you had 345 years of legally enforced racism that was protected by violence, military violence up until the, uh, in, the, in the Civil War and then uh, vigilante and often official violence up through the Jim Crow era, the consequences for that are not going to be undone rapidly, and they're not going to be completely undone in the 56 years since the Civil Rights Act. And we have to understand that and grapple with that honestly. And it took for me, it took me to understand that, to see the different experience that my youngest daughter had living in this world than my oldest daughter, for example. It took me seeing that, and it's unfortunate that it took me seeing that when all of the facts were in theory available to me before, but it was the experience that changed my mind and heart about this. Uh, Eugene Robinson, I mean, that, that is what many uh, civil rights leaders of the 60s said, put your... You know, try to put yourself in somebody else's shoes to try to understand how they're being impacted. Right, but but I but we can't wait for um, you know. I, I David's uh, experience is is uh, is instructive, uh, and uh, and it was a great piece. But we can't wait for for every family, every white family in this country to become multiracial. Uh, to, to then address the issue of, of white supremacy and the original sin uh, of this country that has never been uh, expiated, that, that has never been dealt with fully. Um, and so, yes, we, we ratchet forward, uh, we make some progress, it always comes very scratchily, it's never smooth and easy. I do think this is potentially one of those really important moments um, when, when we can move forward, but it will not be without conflict. I do not expect uh, leadership uh, from, the, from the federal level, or certainly not from President Trump. Uh, I, I expect to see more action on the local level. Um, and uh, and I, I think the protests will continue. This is an election year. People are going to be active and out there. And, and you know, I think this is, this is going to keep bubbling. And, um, and I frankly hope it does. You know, Christian Welker, there's, there's two photos from Monday that I think when you put them side by side, it's quite the contrast. Joe Biden, it was about in the middle of the afternoon on Monday. He's with, uh, at an, uh, with I believe, at an African-American church, and he took a knee in a photo. A couple hours later, President Trump does the now infamous photo op in front of St. John's Church holding a Bible. Uh, I don't know if the contrast can get clearer with just two photos. It is a remarkable split screen, Chuck, and we are seeing uh, a tale of these two men and how the president leads and how former Vice President Biden uh, is signaling that he would lead. Biden essentially trying to show that he is someone who would lead with compassion, uh, that he's willing to listen. This is clearly the type of image that will appeal to core Democrats. How will independents see it? That remains uh, to be seen. Is this something that can energize and bring in new voters? And for President Trump's part, he's trying to make the case that he's the law and order president, something that appeals to his base. But Chuck, I go back to that moment when he went to St. John's Church. I was with President Trump uh, and was there asking him repeatedly about his broader plans to deal with what these protesters are demanding 
change. And he has yet to really enumerate that. Chuck, his response to me was to shush me. He shushed reporters again on Friday when they tried to ask him, what is your plan? And do you see this as fundamentally an issue of systemic racism? Biden is trying to draw a contrast. He's spoken about his plans to address this crisis, Chuck. You know, it is notable, as you're right, President Trump has, has been reticent to sort of embrace what many Americans seem to be um, agreeing to with these protests. Roger Goodell ended up, I mean, it was interesting, NFL players put together a powerful video um, making some demands of the NFL, and Roger Goodell, and I want to play a little bit of it here, um, attempted to respond, and it seemed, in his own way, apologize for the NFL's previous stance on these protests. Take a listen to Goodell's comments. We, the National Football League, condemn racism and the systematic oppression of black people. We, the National Football League, admit we were wrong for not listening to NFL players earlier and encourage all to speak out and peacefully protest. We, the National Football League, believe black lives matter. You know, Gene, he didn't say the name Colin Kaepernick. And that, for some, <laughs> means that he didn't really mean it and that the NFL didn't mean it. And until you say the name, until yeah. you apologize to him, they're not going to believe him. Is that a fair critique from the that's players? Ab that's absolutely fair. And you just say, say the name. It's, it's two, two words, uh, very simple. The, the player um, who, who, who really, who, by taking a knee, um, drew so much attention to the issue of police violence ag against African Americans and who was, who was ostracized and, and banned, essentially, from the NFL uh, for doing so. Uh, and, and so I, I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when, um, when I, I, I see that there is buy-in from the NFL owners. Um, who have, have been, who are quite um, conservative and frankly hidebound. Um, and, um, and, and so we'll see what happens if, if and when there are football games this year. Uh, I suspect a lot of players will take a knee. Um, and I suspect yeah, I, there will I, be. I, I have a, you know. Yeah, and it'll be players we haven't seen take a knee before, perhaps a certain starting quarterback with the New Orleans Saints. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm going to pause it here. Hello from Washington, I'm Chuck Todd, and thanks for checking out the Meet the Press channel on YouTube. Click on the button down here to subscribe and click over here to watch the latest interviews, highlights, and other digital exclusives.